when I started thinking about rhythm analysis, I started to think about all of the various aspects of what are modern sciences and how rhythm can be something that is a cross-section, that is a surveyable entity in each kind of knowledge construction. So whether it is uh, the animal locomotion series of Edward Mybridge, which were influential in the history of cinema, rhythm becomes a kind of fluid construct that relates with each aspect of the museum that we create for the biennial, but also the larger thematic of uh, the scale of modernity and the gaps of history. You will see a lot of works that relate with uh, anthropological aspects of reading modernity and the kind of uh, almost violence that is shared between the history of the colony as well as the first encounter with a certain uh, indigenous uh, uh, community. And this, this is also fictionalized. So, and this also is sort of uh, turned on its head and to kind of read rhythm also between relationships, between those who are so-called experts in the field of ethnography or anthropology and the kind of relations they build with uh, people who are considered primitive or indigenous. One of the works in which you actually read rhythm as an inscription on surface is this small vitrine that I present, uh, which is based on a Google satellite image of white lines in the Gobi Desert. So in 2011, the Google satellite found these, just a pattern of, of white lines in the Gobi Desert in China. And there was a lot of controversy around what are these lines? What do they symbolize? Are they a military satellite? Is it a UFO? So there was kind of this whole scale of macro fiction. This became for me quite interesting and I commissioned an artist in Ghana, a textile artist, to create a piece uh, of, of Kente textile based on this image of Google Satellite. So that, that for me is also where rhythm analysis becomes a method of transfer where a digital image turns into a textile. No? The swimming project that was proposed by Francisco Camacho, who is a Colombian artist living in the Netherlands, it's called the 360 degree stroke. So Francisco has invented a swimming stroke that actually shares with um, a kind of special training that is done by the US Marines. So it, it has this strange uh, violent military aspect and yet it's very playful because it what it does is reinscribes the rhythm of your body in water and it enables you not to move in a straight line but to move in a kind of curve through the water so it changes entirely your experience of uh, being in water uh, in opposition to the kind of experience we have been taught as standard strokes no like the freestyle the backstroke everywhere in every culture it's become so standardized so Francisco was interested in rupturing what has become a hierarchy of swimming. I would say that the, so the history of time as well as the history of measurement is not as long as we think it is. This for me was a question to also start with because when we were discussing uh, the thematic of the monstrosity of, of modernity, the vector of modernity as a sort of skin of violence. So uh, for instance, if you look at this display on metronomes, which is something that uh, one sees just upon entry into the museum, it's the first large vitrine. There's a kind of um, associative relation between music composers such as Ligeti, who compose music using the metronome as a sort of, not as the device of regularity, but rather of creation. Of course, it is what, in a, in it, it makes time a kind of regime. It makes music also, in a way, dead because it, it regulates it. But they instead turned the metronome into a creative instrument once again and brought it out of time rather than what makes us follow time. So I, 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 I do, on various levels, play with this. And, If you see the work of Hannah Darboven, who created personal ways to stage and to inscribe her life 
in different registers of time, she also, in a way, disobeys what is a, a mainstream way of making a calendar of one's own uh, lifespan. I don't think it's, it's about simply about breaking rules, but it is in fact about studying where rules themselves collapse. And it's about thinking where rules fail, because rules are made, no? they don't simply just exist. And so um, I, I am interested in, in also uh, re-looking re at what we think is regularity. There isn't the kind of regime of regularity that we have uh, let ourselves, uh, the, which, which we've sort of incorporated as, as, as a system. But there's something more, more, more of a flow, more of a, a creative aspect of, of making a cycle oneself as, as an encounter. Because the whole history of science and time is about measuring it. But what we are looking at is, like I said, where regularity breaks down, where the formal logic of reading time and reading pace falters. This is what a lot of the presentations as at Museum of Rhythm discuss. Where it occurs, where it shows itself, no? and this is also the showing of the monster's face, or the showing of the, or the human face, I mean, depends which way you want to think about it. <laughs>